That way, if they did um, attempt to kill me or kill me like they killed Michael Jackson. These will be my final show performances in London. This will be it. This is it. And when I say this is it, it really means... Um, it shouldn't be a situation where they own the album or the work. It's a, we're talking about intellectual copyright. If they're going to be indeed a delivery service, then that's fine. But even FedEx doesn't say that they own the thing that they ship. It's been 15 years since we lost the King of Pop, Michael Jackson, and eight years since another legend, Prince, left us. But the mystery surrounding their deaths is still alive and well. There's been a lot of speculation over the years that both MJ and Prince knew that their time was coming, the moment they stood up to the shady industry higher-ups who allegedly wanted to take control of their valuable music catalogs. You're just saying you, you believe it may have been murder. You still think that? Absolutely. Why? Absolutely. Why are you I so would sure? never, ever think differently. Because first of all, Michael told me that they were going to murder him. In fact, both Prince and Michael dropped hints in interviews on more than one occasion that the whole industry is just smoke and mirrors, and that celebrities are nothing but puppets controlled by those with real power. And then even some contemporary artists like Kanye West have publicly claimed that both MJ and Prince were eliminated, and that the same destiny awaits every celeb who dares to break free from the industry control. But but what exactly did MJ and Prince know about the industry? And did they try to warn us about it? Let's get into it. Ultimately, it keeps us apart and uh, it keeps the people in power uh, in charge of us. Okay, first let's talk about Michael because news recently broke that Sony bought a major share in MJ's catalog. And this news sparked a lot of backlash from MJ's fans because it's no secret that Michael absolutely despised Sony and fought very hard to retain control over his music. So earlier this month, Sony Music Group confirmed that they sealed the deal to snag half of Michael Jackson's music catalog. And it's being called the biggest payday for a musician's assets ever. Reports are saying the whole thing is worth over $1.2 billion. And some even claim it could be as high as $1.5 billion. So basically, Sony's coughing up at least $600 million for a piece of those iconic rights. But the news did not sit right with MJ's fans because they know how much MJ fought against Sony for this not to happen. In fact, MJ publicly called out former Sony chairman and CEO Tommy Mottola just a few years before his untimely death. Being the artist that I am, um at Sony, I, I've, I've generated several billion dollars for Sony, several billion, and um, they, they really thought that my mind is always on music and dancing, and, and, I, and it usually is, but they never thought that this performer and myself would outthink them. Yeah! Fans also believe there's something very shady about John Bronca, the co-executor of the Michael Jackson estate. See, MJ fired John Bronca twice in 1990 and 2003. So the fact that this man is now the co-executor of his estate obviously doesn't sit right with Michael's fans. But we're just scratching the surface here because multiple members of Michael's family claimed that Michael was literally scared for his life and tried to warn his loved ones the higher ups would try to eliminate him for his catalog. Now we all know that Dr. Conrad Murray was found guilty for supposedly accidentally giving Michael too much of the powerful sedative. But there are a lot of people who are still convinced that Dr. Murray was just a pawn in a game played by some big shots in the industry who wanted to take over MJ's music catalog. Now it's very suspicious that Michael didn't personally pick Dr. Conrad Murray. He was brought in only a month before Michael passed and it was all part of the deal with AEG Live, the folks promoting Michael's London concerts. And get this, during the trial they found out Michael didn't even sign Murray's job contract. Several members of the Jackson family have expressed doubts over the official narrative, including Michael's daughter Paris, who once stated she was absolutely sure her dad was and she even called out AEG Live for working their performers to death. These allegations gained even more momentum after The Sun published notes allegedly written by MJ in the weeks leading up to his death. They are trying to me, one note read. While in another one, Michael said he was scared for his life because, quote, the system wants to before my catalog, end quote. And then there was another note that mentioned AEG Live and Michael said the company was putting too much pressure on him for the tour, which gave him a bad feeling. And then in 2010, Michael's three 
Street Kids and his mom, Katherine Jackson, took AEG Live to court, saying they negligently hired Dr. Murray without Michael's approval. Prince, Michael's son, testified in court, saying his dad was getting pushed too hard for his comeback tour. And he even mentioned that he heard Michael saying they were trying to Prince said his father would cry after phone calls, saying, quote, they're going to me. They're going to me. But the jury sided with AEG Live, arguing that the corporation didn't know Dr. Murray would be unfit to perform the work for which he was hired. But despite the court saying one thing, Michael's younger sister LaToya went on an interview spree, claiming that Michael was taken out because he was apparently worth more dead than alive. About Michael, it, it sounded like you actually believed that he truly thought he was going to be Oh no, I did. When he first told me, AJ, I, I have to be honest, I didn't believe it. I said, Michael, come on, you're Michael Jackson. Who in the world would do this? Nobody would, would try to you. I mean, it would be world news and everybody would know about it. They're not going to do it. But he was so passionate and adamant about it and says, you don't understand. It's all about my catalog. This is what they want and this is what they're going to do. And he was terrified. He, he was a, a very happy, go lucky person. He loved amusement parks and the whole bit. But I saw him just get withdrawn and, and nervous all the time. He says, you don't understand, this is very serious, this is a very serious matter, and it was. Latoya even spilled the beans that Michael thought he was being controlled by some shady people, and he was terrified because he knew they were after him and his music catalog. How do you think he died? You've been quoted as saying you, you believe it may have been You still think that? Absolutely. Why, Absolutely. Why are you I so sure? I would never, ever think differently, because first of all, Michael told me that they were going to He was afraid. He was, was afraid for was his life. The people that were involved in his life, the people that were controlling him, where people come into your life, wiggle their way in, control you, manipulate, control your funds, your finances, everything that you have, and you must do what they tell you to do. And that's what Michael was going through. And he knew that everything that was happening to him was not kosher, it wasn't right, and it disturbed him greatly. And he kept saying it over and over and over again. And then more recently, Kanye West dropped a bombshell claiming that MJ was eliminated and that he almost suffered the same fate after he started speaking out against the people who really pull the strings in the music industry. And then Ben Shapiro is running this narrative that I'm gonna kill myself, right? And he's like, oh, due to his mental health, he's gonna kill himself. That way, if they did uh, attempt to kill or like Michael Jackson or JFK, uh, then, or uh, Aaron, what is the guy's name? Aaron Carter, the guy who wanted to talk to me uh, uh, about the Harley Pass next situation. If they did do that, they would say, oh, it's Ye's mental health. But Kanye didn't stop there. He also claimed that those industry higher ups eliminated Prince because he had ownership of his master recordings. When you sign a music deal, you sign away your rights. Kanye wrote on Twitter. Without the masters, you can't do anything with your own music. Someone else controls where it's played and when it's played. Artists have nothing except fame, touring, and merch. And then Kanye posted a photo of Prince writing, let's get it, big bro. You and Michael passed so we can live. As for Prince's cause of death, officially he OD'd in his Paisley Park estate on April 21st, 2016. According to the police report, Prince thought he was taking Vicodin to manage pain, but had unknowingly taken fake pills laced with fentanyl. But much like MJ's death, Prince's fans are highly suspicious of the official narrative, especially about the fact that he was supposedly accidentally given laced pills. Some sources even claimed that Prince's death was planned by members of Prince's family and Warner Brothers. See, Prince was very outspoken about the shady side of the music industry, and he often claimed that record companies shouldn't even exist. The reason why it became such a big deal back then is ever since my third album, uh, I wasn't really taking large advances from the recording companies. I was recording the albums myself in my own studio. So the way I looked at it, I owned the work because I paid for it. And I did all the work, I created it, so I felt like it should belong to me. That said, the um, companies felt otherwise, and they would always hold this contract up and say, well, you signed it. And I say, well, I understand that. It's not like I want to leave, I just want to, you know, talk about this thing and see if we can't make it more fair. Of course, they wouldn't change because if they changed, they wouldn't really exist. Um, it shouldn't be a situation where they own the album or the work. It's a, we're talking about intellectual copyright. If they're going to be indeed a delivery service, then that's fine. But even FedEx doesn't say that they own the thing that they ship, you know, right? It's ultimately, it keeps us apart and uh, it keeps the people in power 
uh, in charge of us. My elders up in here, let's talk about all this and distribution service. I mean, what do we really need record companies for? I mean, really. It's also worth noting that Prince finally gained control of his masters in 2014, and then less than two years later, he was gone. Sure, it could all be a coincidence, but there are simply too many loose ends, and knowing everything we know about the entertainment industry and Hollywood, you can't really put anything past these industry folks. And a lot of fans can't help but wonder how come all these artists like MJ, Prince, Kanye, and many others who publicly spoke out against the industry control end up either addicted to substances, labeled as men mentally ill or taken out under some weird circumstance. And now with all that has been going on in Hollywood recently with people like Cat Williams and Kanye West coming out to reveal their firsthand experiences in Hollywood and people like Diddy getting exposed for the most disturbing things, it really looks like it's only about to get worse and it's gonna be a year of reckoning. One fan said, I am absolutely convinced that they both Michael and Prince because they became independent from these labels and both died before they could properly release their first self-owned albums. And another one added, what Prince and Michael Jackson have all along tried is exposing the dark, crooked, and shady side of the record companies. But let me know how you feel about all these theories surrounding MJ and Prince's death. Do you think they were really taken out for speaking out against the real puppet masters? Drop your comments down below and don't miss out on this next video.